Hey, hey, good morning. Happy Thursday, everybody. It's Jane from Chalk Mercantile and Surface Anthology. I'm getting my link here so that I can send it out to my text group people. And I just have to wait for Facebook to get me going live. And there I am. All right. And I'll send that out. And if you want to follow me, just text hi or whatever you'd like to text. Just keep it nice. <laughs> 860-385-6. Three six nine eight six zero three eight five six three six nine, and uh, say hi, and you'll be on my my text group. So I wanted to talk. I, I actually got a question about tool maintenance. How do I maintain my tools? How do I clean them? And I use a lot of tools. I've, I mean, historically, I guess I've always painted. I went to art school, I studied illustration and, and fine art, and always using brushes and maintaining those brushes um, is really important. These are not inexpensive tools, and if you take care of them, and I know you've all heard me say this before, they will last forever. Good morning, Barb. Hey, she said, morning, my friend. I love that. Oh, good morning, Debbie. Hey, Sandy from Michigan. I'm so glad you guys have decided to join me today because I'm early, I guess. It's 1045 here in Connecticut, here on the, you know, on the East Coast. So I'm talking about tool maintenance um, along with cleaning. You want to store your tools in a good spot. Um, and I'm going to start with cleaning them. Now, all of my tools, including, you know, me and my natural sea sponges, these are years old. I am not exaggerating. My brushes, this is a favorite brush of mine to do, um, paint effects. It's a natural bristle brush, but it's like super shallow. Oh, Sandy is saying, I just commented on yesterday's video on the red birdhouse. It cuts off at the very last part. Oh, no. Of course, the part I really wanted to see where you put the gold on. Did you have time to put the gold on yesterday or is it going to be on another day? You know what, Sandy? I'm going to go check the video on YouTube and also on Facebook. I'm going to you know, run through it. Sometimes when it cuts off, it's all because I'm streaming to YouTube also, and I will send over the video to you on on one of those platforms so you could see that. Okay, Sandy, no worries. And Barb just rolled out of bed. <laughs> Brenda, hey, she's like, oh my god, I finally caught you. Hey, Brenda, well, I'm gonna be going live every single day as long as I can do it, right? So a lot of it is going to be about, you know, I'll talk about color. Today I'm talking about maintenance because somebody actually asked me about this, along with doing some fun um, painting projects. So here is a brush I love. This is made in Italy. It's by Tiger, T Tigre, however I should know. I'm half Italian. I don't know how they say it. But it's natural bristles. And it's a really nice brush. It, it gives a really cool effect, right? I use scrubby soap on this. I love it. Hey, Brenda. Brenda's saying, yippee. <laughs> love that. I love that. Here is another brush I've used a lot. Um, I used to sell lime paint, L-I-M-E. And I painted quite a few walls with it. It gives a really cool effect. So I use this big um, heavy brush and let me just tell you this really works out your hand it's got a way I don't know it feels like at least a half a pound maintenance Brenda's saying is that like cleaning <laughs> what is this you speak of <laughs> Brenda I'm gonna get you on board with this because then you'll you'll all the money you spend on these tools they're gonna last 
forever. <laughs> hey, Cynthia. Thanks so much for joining. She says, morning, glad I caught you. Absolutely. So this, this brush is a, I don't know, this is a $65 brush. I am not going to, you know, abuse this brush, right? One of my sons, Christopher, who also went to art school, he was, during his summers, years ago, he was on a painting crew, a really good house painting crew. And they did like all those, you know, those paints of Europe, the oil lacquers and everything. And let me tell you, those guys really, at the end of the day, even though they were dog tired, they took really good care of their brushes for sure. Cleaning never, Brenda says, maintenance, maintenance maybe. <laughs> Well, you know what? That's the other thing, too. You got to do you, right? You got to do what works for you, for sure. I just remember, like, when I used to do makeup and I had all those makeup brushes, and at the end of a day, like maybe at the end of a wedding party, I would look at all those brushes because I would have triples, quadruples, because you can't use the same brush on two different people, right, without cleaning it. And I would just look at those and go, oh my God, I have to clean all these brushes. And then I would just go to my Zen place <laughs> just, and I actually, you know, would shampoo them and lay them out. And it was a ritual. And I just tried to go to a place because I am, I don't like cleaning you guys at all. And, uh, but I had to do it, right? Because otherwise it would just be depressing to get up the next day and see a pile of brushes. So all these brushes that you see, these are all my favorite tools. These are m many years old. I use Scrubby. Here's my wax brush, one of my wax brushes. I've had this for years. I use Scrubby soap. I, I sound like a commercial, but this is what I use for every single one of these things. Even when I use tongue depressors over again, my little inexpensive artist brushes, right? All my brushes, I use Scrubby, and there's two reasons why. It doesn't leave a film on my brushes. Here's another really cool um, brush. It doesn't leave a film, and it will, I had a brush that I remember, it was either for a workshop or I was painting something. Oh, and it was to go, my, my, one of my sons was at the University of Minnesota, he was flying in, he had landed, I was all excited, I put down my brushes, I think he got there early, and I'm racing to get him, and that brush dried solid, right, solid, and I actually took a little thing of water, hot water, I threw in a scrubby soap, I put the brush next to it, and after two days, it had dissolved all the paint, it was chalk paint. And um, why this works, I believe, is because it has ascorbic acid in it, and that will break paint down. Ascorbic acid is really, really strong. Um, so I love, I love, love, love these brushes. Now, Brenda is saying, I'm still looking for a brush that handles, feel, handles and feels good. They all look great, but dot, 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 absolutely. I've been using um, I've been using brushes my whole life, and I totally know what you're talking about. I do that, you know, with my my combs that I used to use for cutting hair. I will only use a certain brand of Japanese combs; they're beautiful. And you know me; I talked about my scissors the other day. So yeah, for me, it was the handmade Authentico brushes. Hands down, we do not, unfortunately, I looked for a U.S. brush manufacturer and they just don't come close. And um, these are incredible. These are what I use. And these are what I use when I want a smooth finish. Mostly when I'm using chalk paint, I'll use these brushes. When I'm using um, milk paint, here's another one I love for getting in. This is an Authentico brush. When I'm using milk paint, oh, I forgot to shut the ringer off of my phone. Um, I will use a natural bristle brush when I'm using milk paint because that's when I want to create texture and I will use the natural bristle brushes. There's a lot of brushes made in Italy like these and um, they're wonderful. I don't really use these for chalk paint 
because again, they're natural bristles and they create some texture there. Oh, Brenda's saying, oh my God. Oh yeah, I'm now cutting my own hair. <laughs> Brenda's saying, break all paint down or only chalk? Brenda, I've used it for both milk and chalk paint. And I also will use chalk, I have a chalk paint that has a um, built-in top coat that's the One Step Paint by Amy Howard at home. I don't use any other. I don't use Fusion. I'm not interested in um, a latex paint, acrylic paint. That's not my thing. Um, but I bet you it will uh, because this this my brush was like a brick. Sandy is saying she loves scrubby and it smells really great. It does. And it's made in the United States. It's made down in Florida. And, you know, we always have one by every sink. We love it. We absolutely love them. So that is what I do when I'm also, like when you have a brush like this, this doesn't have a hook, so you can't hang it. What I loved when I had my shop and I used to have workshops, my husband made me like a a, a kind of rolling board that had all the hooks so I could hang my brushes, you know, and let them dry because you want them to dry this way. You know, resist the temptation when you have a brush like this with no hook to stand it up like this when it's drying because all that water is going to go down into the ferrule and it's going to break down the glues that are in there. So a brush like this, you should see me. I get a towel and I roll it so that the brush is kind of going downhill, right? So that the bristles are going down like this. <laughs> and that is how I... um dry this kind of brush. Brenda's saying Amazon. I don't know. What are you referring to? Amazon. Let me know, Brenda. Um, and I also use these for my sea sponges. I use scrubby soap. All I do is I take the scrubby soap. I squeeze them all together. I squeeze the soap through uh, the natural sea sponges. I squeeze them out and I let them dry. And some of them, the more, like this one, the more it gets worn, um, I get like a more refined texture, and I just love it. And any of you that took the Antique Finish Workshop or are going to take the Antique Finish Workshop, you're going to see me using natural sea sponges a lot. Scrubby. Brenda, I sell Scrubby right in at chalkmercantile.com. And you can also probably buy it if you just put scrubby soap in. Um, you can, I think you could buy it directly from them. Um, or for any of us stockists that have it, because so many of us swear by this. So by the way, you guys, my shop website is chalkmercantile.com. For my membership and um, workshops, it's surfaceanthology.com. Brand is okie dokie. Hi, Shannon. Good morning. She's bringing her sunshine flowers and a big smiley face. I love that. And, you know, it looks like that out today, but it's going to be H-O-T hot here. Barb is saying, I saw where some were, someone used hair ties to keep the bristles together while drying. Absolutely. If you have a brush that splays, I call it. I used to use... Um, purdy brushes right and then I noticed I bought a purdy this was years ago years ago before I started um, I, I actually became the distributor for Authentico and the purdy brush was great and then I went in I bought one and then all of a sudden the, the the needles are splaying imagine you know you're using this brush and you're painting and the neat, the um, bristle is splaying, and it's dragging paint with it, right? That's a terrible brush. So Purdy, what I found out is that Purdy, um, which used to be made in the U.S., was being made overseas, and the quality went down a lot. Um, the other one you can use, oh, now I'm going to forget the name of it. There's another brush that if I had to buy a brush, it would be, this would be the one I would buy, made in the United States, and now I'm forgetting. I'm gonna put it in the links, um, but it's it's a really nice replacement for the old, the original per, purdy quality, right? But yeah, if you have an old brush or an inexpensive brush and it's splaying, absolutely, 
You can take, I've seen people um, roll like shop towels around. They'll lay it down, they'll roll a shop towel around it tightly and that will also keep those bristles together, right? Now when I'm using, um, where, oh here they are. So when I'm doing, ah, these are dirty brushes you guys I was using. <laughs> Is using these and I have to I have to wash them. So these are the Amy Howard at home. I call these chip brushes on steroids. They're much better. These are these are also years old. I've had these for years. I use them over and over again. When I'm doing decorative waxes, this is what I use, meaning colored waxes or like a um when I'm putting down like black wax and I want to create a striae effect. I don't use this this brush. This brush is for putting down an even beautiful veil of wax quickly and efficiently, right? This does it. It's incredible. But when I'm doing colored waxes, I don't want, I might not want, um, and there are times when I do put down dark brown and I want it to be even and like a glow. But when I don't, I use um, the Amy Howard at home brushes and sometimes I don't know if I did it with this one I did I'll cut I'll get my scissors right and I will cut into the bristles going with the bristles to get even more texture in there so I could get more of a striae effect I love it love it love it hey Rose Lee still oh I love your name hello hot here too absolutely I'm telling you it is H-O-T hot everywhere. So hopefully next week, we're all going to get a little bit of relief, right? But that is how I maintain my brushes. When I'm cleaning my wax brush, it's scrubby. And boy, I use really hot water, right? And, and I don't like, I think Brenda, were you saying this? I don't always clean my wax brushes. This is my clear wax brush. It's not dirty. This, this brush is only for clear wax. I put a C in case I have any question in my mind, right? And I might wash this brush maybe once a quarter, um, something like this. When I'm using my colored wax brushes, these I'll do every time I use them. Because I, you know, like, I don't wanna, I might decide I don't know. I could sometimes I'll use a custom color and I don't have, I don't like label these out. So these I just keep really, really clean. You know, I wash them every time I use them. So that is it, you guys. <laughs> I am so happy to be here on a Thursday and I'm so excited to see all of you. Let me know your favorite tools. Have you found a favorite brush that you love and, you know, just use it over? That's your go to. Show me, tell me, um, have any little tricks, like I like the trick of the hair ties in case you have a, you know, a splaying brush, right? Because that's deadly when you're painting. It's the worst. And uh, like imagine painting windows and you've got a little bristle going out and dragging paint along. You can also cut them. Um, but let me know what you all do and what your favorites are, any secrets you have, you could share with us, right? <laughs> Everyone, I'm gonna see you tomorrow. I'm gonna do something with paint. I don't know what yet. I do have some notes, so I'll be back here again tomorrow, which is Friday, um, and almost the weekend, right? So everybody stay cool. Have a wonderful 